Today we've got three new Easter decor DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project will be an Easter wreath. You'll be needing some pipe cleaners, some type of a mesh or a burlap. I have some ribbons from Dollar Tree, two different kinds. And then a variety of flowers, a couple of big ones, and then some of these smaller ones. And you'll need a Dollar Tree wreath. This is not the largest, but it's the next one. Here's that information for you. We'll start by prepping this wreath form. Going to grab those pipe cleaners and we're going to start off by going around on the inside ring of the wreath. We wrap it around right there and we'll go all the way around it. Then we'll come back around on the outside and go around the crossbars on the outer section of the wreath. I think this is going to make like 12 different sections. Okay, so now I'm going to take my, I don't know what type of material this is, it's a plasticky, I think it's supposed to look like burlap, but it came from the thrift store, so I'm not entirely sure what the material is, but I like it, and I like the color. So we're going to make cruffles, or I think they're also referred to as a woodland ruffle, and they're easy to use, and I've just, or to make, and I'm just showing you how to do it if you need to use the clips. You roll it over and then clip it and then roll the other end and then walk your fingers together to make these little pretty cruffles. Now you can put them down like I do or you can turn them over and put them the other way so that the rolls are on the top. To me it's just a preference, whatever you like best. It looks sort of like a bow tie when you put them on this way. And we're going to do the inside and then the outside, the inside, the outside. You could do all the inside first and then do the outside or vice versa. But when I put them on this way, I like how they overlap on one another, going inside and outside. So that's how I'm doing mine, but you can choose whatever way um, is best for you. It's your preference, make it your own. And then once they're all done, this is how it's gonna look. And I'm just kind of fluffing around and making sure that I have these spaced over the wire wreath and I am pulling out all of those little pipe cleaners because we'll be using those to attach some ribbon down to so it's easier to go ahead and get them out so you're not searching for them when your hands are full then we're going to take the ribbons and one of them is sort of burlap and the other one's like a thin silky type material or polyester I'm not really I'm not sure I didn't check the uh, the little spool it came on but I'm gonna overlap them I'm gonna put the solid color on the bottom and the printed on the top I'm gonna gather up the end of it put it down on any pipe cleaner you choose you can do it on the inside or the outside doesn't matter I'm gonna keep that top one on top and keep that orange one on the bottom and we're gonna go inside outside inside outside wrapping over here if you want to measure you can measure um, it would probably be somewhere between 8 to 10 inch little loops here I didn't measure what I do is just lay it on the top of the the um, cruffles and then just make sure my spacing is right so it appears as though it's just laying or floating right on top I don't want to squish down my ruffles and take the dimension away or the fullness away from the wreath so I just make sure that it sits right on top of the one that's underneath it. Now, the important thing um, is going to be that you make each of these about the same size. You don't want some to be super small and some to be very wide because you're going to be separating this ribbon and you don't want to have you know any type of irregularities in the in the wreath. I hope that made sense. Again, it's one thing in my head, comes out my mouth another way, but you'll get it in a minute, I think. Okay, so this is how it looks when you get to the end. Now we're just gonna take our hands and pull these out. So we'll do orange on the bottom and then print on the top and then vice versa. So you see, you're gonna 
Do it opposite as you go around. This is going to give you some additional dimension and color and interest in your wreath. And you see this piece here, it wasn't quite enough to tuck into that last tie. That's not a problem. I'm just going to put a little split here in it, a little dovetail, and just curl it down and it'll be fine. You really don't even notice it once it's done. So just make sure you have all those nice and fluffed. Those wires help it stay still. This is just a little bouquet that I made to go on the top of the wreath. You're just going to add your flowers, the tallest ones in the back. My camera kind of died and I didn't notice it, so I apologize for not having that in there for you. Then I have this foam carrot that I got from the thrift store. You can get your little fake carrots anywhere. I don't know why I'm so into carrots this Easter and spring, but I really am. Then be sure that you cut off all of these little extra pipe cleaners and you hot glue that little bundle down like this and the carrot on top of it. When you glue that down, you'll get the final result. The next project is an Easter sign. So we're gonna take some of these wall creations from Dollar Tree. They are two sides and you can actually pull these apart. I have two different types of Dollar Tree ribbon. One of them is a Dollar Tree Plus, a bunny from Dollar Tree. And then that plank sign or shiplap sign that's underneath it as well. And it doesn't have a tag on it. I must have lost it in the car. I'm going to use this emery board that I use all the time on my projects to get in between those cracks. There are splinters in there. I do not want to be working on this project and have to stop short because I poke a hole in my finger or get a splinter and then have to deal with that. No, I would rather just go ahead and sand all this down, make it nice and smooth and safe. I'll take some of these beautiful, I think these are ranunculus, and I'm going to use those also for the project. See how you can just, they're perforated, you just pull them apart. And then I'm going to lay these down on my two pieces, my wood pieces from Dollar Tree. I'll start with the smaller one. There's a variety of these and you can get different colors. There are some that are purple hydrangeas that are absolutely gorgeous and some other jewel toned ones that I will be using also this summer to craft with. So if you don't wanna miss it, be sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Now I'm gonna just lightly put this on the board because I need to get an idea of where my bunny's gonna go and how much space I am going to need here. So I just rested that sticker on top. I didn't push it down. And that way I can just easily pull it up and then position it where it needs to be before I you know, um, push it down and make it lock into place. So I like this and I'm just gonna put it right there. I rub it down with my hand. These are just stickers. They're decals, but they are stickers. And you can use them on more than just your wall for wall decor. All right, then I'm gonna take the bigger one and I'm gonna use this on the bunny. And I'm gonna put it um, off center. I want it to be partially on the bunny, not the entire bunny. I'm just slowly looking where I wanna position it so that I can see the leaves and the parts of the flower that I want to have on here. Just push it down. Now I'm just kind of patting it down and rubbing it down on the back side of the bunny so it's clinging to that sticker. And then I am going to take my little squeegee thing and push it all down and rub it all down so that it is just not going to fall off. You know, I'm not real sure with wall stickers, but I've had I've had luck. I, they don't just peel right off, but I want to really ensure that I don't leave air bubbles and make a mess from my project. So I'm going to cut and then if you push down on the bunny, you can pull off some of the pieces of sticker. But just be very careful and go slow because you may choose to use like um, some detail scissors and trim it off. And I did do that in some parts. And then I'm just going to sand off my edges rather than cutting it. I think it gives a better look. It looks more like a hand painted project when you do it this way. But by all means, do what makes you happy. And I went all the way around. And you can see up there on his, well, okay, we'll, we'll go over here and we'll address that ear in a minute. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side. I want to, I have a little um, 
It's like a trowel, but what this actually is, I found out, is like a cheese cutter. But it is the perfect tool for this type of thing. And it's really good at scraping stickers off. So I'm just going to go down in the crack and just push down so that it cuts that sticker. And then I'll take, you can see how it looks there. I'll take that same file. We know it fits in the crack. So we'll use it there and we'll use it to sand off the sides just like we did on the bunny. Sand down and away, just pull down and away and look how easily it pulls off. Now in those little openings between the planks, I guess you could call them in this piece of wood, you are going to, or MDF, gonna go through there and just, it fits perfectly so you can just sand it and wiggle it kind of slightly back and forth and it'll look like this was hand painted on as well. I love this. I don't know why I've never done this before, but I'll probably be doing it again. So I don't like how that's just over there on the ear. So I'm gonna just take that off. You see how easily this comes off, even after I have really pushed it to keep it in place. So you could peel it off if you needed to, if you make a mistake. And I love that, kind of goof proof. So then I'm just gonna scrape off the part that stuck down and it came off pretty good. No problem, you can't even see it was there. Okay, so we need to address these holes where the hanger was. I'm going to use some painter's tape, and mine just comes from Dollar Tree. No sense spending a ton of money on something that you can get cheaper. Especially when it's crafting. This is not supposed to be professional, right? You'll never see it. Now I'm going to take some of that lightweight spackle from Dollar Tree, and just the end of a paint star stick that I have cut off of another project, and I'm just going to kind of smear it into that um, circle or that opening and then just clean it off with the same little stick. It makes those holes a lot less noticeable. So now I decided to kind of rough up my edges, make it look a little more rustic and I'm just going to go over with that sander, the emery board, but you can use a sanding block or a finger sander. I'm just going to go around the edges to kind of take that white off so you can see the brown underneath and it gives it a little bit of a outline so that kind of pops a little bit. You don't have to do this, and you could use an antiquing wax if you wanted to put heavier, you know, distressing on it. Totally up to you. So now I know my bunny's gonna be on the bottom, and I wanna give it some dimension. I wanna lift it up from where it's at. And doing this will also help allow you to use this as a standing sign if you chose to use it this way, but I'm not. It's still gonna be a hang, hanging sign. These are just those little building blocks, and mine came from a pack that came from, oh, I think I got them at the thrift store, but they are actually from Target, and they're Easter Baller Spot, or Bullseye's Playground. I don't know. I don't go in Target, y'all. I get my stuff at closeout stores. So, now, look at that, and that's going to give you an opening so that you could put florals in it or you don't have to put anything in it, or you can change it out. All right, so we're gonna add some hot glue on the back and I'm gonna put it down. And I wanna make sure that his little heels on his feet do not extend past the end of the sign because if you do that, then you definitely can't use it as a standing sign. Y'all found this at Walmart a couple of weeks ago. I got a pink one and I have one that's got kind of a yellow, really pretty ribbon. This is from, this purple is from burlapfabric.com. It is six inch burlap ribbon with a surged edge. And uh, we're gonna use it to make ribbon and I'll show you how to do that. So when you use the pink ribbon down here, you're gonna cut just the same amount. This is about five inches. I'll have two pieces of the bunny ribbon, two pieces of the stripe ribbon, and then I'm gonna cut one piece of this burlap. I'm gonna cut off the surged edges because I want to have these frayed like the cotton ribbon that is uh, the pink and white there. And I chose these ribbons because they match the flowers that are in this project. And of course the bunnies are adorable. There's a bunny in there too. I am going to just fray the edges. You see how easy this works now when you take the stitched edge off. So I'm just going to fray it and then take my scissors and cut it down the middle that's given us two pieces of ribbon now, and I'll fray that inside edge as well on both of these pieces.
Then I'm going to take each one of my ribbons and cut those in a dovetail on both ends. And I found a scrap of green ribbon I had left from Dollar Tree and I just went ahead and cut that in half. It's a little shorter than the other ones, but that won't matter. This does not have wire and neither does this one, which cutting these ribbons short is going to make it a whole lot easier to deal with and to put into shape to keep in shape. And then there's the bunny ribbon on top. So once I have them stacked, I'm just going to kind of squish them up in the middle a little bit, take a piece of jute string underneath it, and then as I'm pulling to tie, I'm kind of pleating the ribbon so that it stays down mm, relatively flat. I don't want it to all collapse back into one stack. I want it to stay splayed apart like that. So it still has that X look. I'm going to fluff up the ribbons that have wire on them. Make sure this is what I like. And I think that this type of bow is going to be really cute for this project. However, if you don't like a stacked bow like this, you don't have to do this. You can do something else. This little messy bow is just adorable to me though. It's playful and whimsical. And I think it's really cute for Easter and spring. Use quite a bit of hot glue and I'm just gluing it down to his ear. And I didn't even wait for my spackle to dry. It's all still just like it was. I just kept going in this project. I was in the flow, people, in the flow. After you've had it clamped, you can remove the clamp. When the glue is cooled, you can feel the back of the bunny ear and tell if it's ready to come off. And then just pull it off. You could also tie it around that ear if you chose to do it that way. And we're going to start on a little bouquet. So these are those thrifted flowers. I get at the thrift store like old uh, bouquets that were probably for weddings, you know. They, they look like they would be, but they're handmade by other people. And I just pull them apart and then use the flowers for whatever. You know, put them in their categories with their colors and then I can use them again. That's what I did with these beautiful flowers. Now this pick came from Dirt Cheap. It is also something that came from the dollar spot. Um, Dirt Cheap sells big bins and you just go in there and dig through them and it'll have a certain price on there. And the day that I went in there, these greenery picks were 50 cents a piece. So I thought that beautiful dark green would be so pretty with these light flowers. So I put those in the back. And then I'm going to just use a zip tie to hold them together, but you can tie them if you want or use a pipe cleaner, you know, whatever's easiest for you. Not everybody is, you know, not everybody has zip ties at home, but I do encourage you to get them if you're a crafter because they do make some projects a lot easier. Now I'm gonna pull these pieces out so that they stick kind of through the floral. I don't want them to just look like they're laid on top. I want it to look like a beautiful little bouquet. I can trim off my ends and trim off that zip tie to make this nice and blunt and neat on the end. And then we'll be wrapping this up just like you possibly could if you were making your own bouquet for your wedding. And we're just gonna tie a couple of knots right above that zip tie so nothing slips while we're twisting. Then you can add some hot glue if you want to to make sure that you can get that rope around the zip tie and then just begin twisting. I'm just gonna grab it with my right hand and with my left hand, I am going to twist all of those pieces of stems together. So I'm gonna go down and then back up slightly and then down and then back up slightly until I get to the end. And then we'll use a little bit of hot glue to glue that down so you don't see the edge. Now you won't see the edge anyway, the way we're gonna use this, but I, I would know if it wasn't like this. Now you can take that and place it right down in the space that we left open behind the bunny. It's so cute. This is so pretty. This looks so cottagey to me. What do y'all think? Really cute. But what I think is missing as I was pulling these apart was a little bit of that violet color that we have in that ribbon. 
So after I get done fluffing these, and they're on wire, so I can twist these heads around in any direction I'd like. I don't want them to all be facing forward, so I'm just, you know, some to the side, some to the front. And I went and found this beautiful pick in some of my scraps, and I'm going to place that down in there. And just have that little flyaway right in the top. And now we have that violet blue that is in the stickers that we used, and that is in our ribbon and everything blends in beautifully together. I hope you like this one as much as I do. I, this, I love it. I love it, I love it. The next project is a bunny home. Okay, y'all, I went in my firewood pile and pulled out this beautiful piece of wood. Beautiful. I've got some scrap wood as well. These are just, I uh, cut them from the thrift store. And then some moss from Dollar Tree. These are just random scraps of pics that I had. And then these bunnies came from Timu. This video is not sponsored by Timu. They didn't pay me. I just went and bought these myself to see what the hype was. Love them. They're very cute. They're like a resin. And I am going to start off by adding some moss to this base. We're going to refer to this log underneath as our base. So I'm going to add moss here and there. And to me, the places that you would see moss are going to be the areas that have little pockets. It's little pockets where soil would gather when the wind blows and where seeds would collect and our spores, depending on what it is you're working with, you know. And I'm just going to lay those in those little areas. This natural wood makes it very easy to decide where to put this greenery. You can get a piece of log out of your yard. You can use whatever you like. You could do this on a wood round if you wanted to, but you wouldn't have the dimension that you would have on a natural piece of wood. So, I am going to continue around, and some of this has uh, natural splits in it, and I guess when they were cutting it, it has some splits in it. Possibly the aging and drying process made it split more. Who knows, but I'm happy that it's there, because it's great in a craft project. I couldn't imagine throwing this in the fireplace. What a beautiful piece of wood. Look at that texture and color. It is a stunner. I guess y'all could call me a tree hugger. Yeah, you could probably call me a tree hugger. That wouldn't make me mad. I love trees. Love them, love them, love them. All kinds of trees. Love to see the wind blow. Love to see the leaves fall. Love to see the, the leaves blooming and the flowers blooming on trees. Just love trees. Love them. Love wood. Love the texture. It's just beautiful and earthy and, you know, the trees protect our planet. They give us shade. They help with soil erosion. Trees are just awesome. Not to mention all the little bugs and critters that live in trees. Stunning. A natural piece that you could find anywhere to work with. And it's free. You don't have to pay for it. So these little pieces right here are called Farmhouse Witch Hazel. I got them from Dollar Tree. I can rarely find them, but when I do find them, I pick them up. There's a variety of colors I've seen. There is uh, this color green. I've seen white. I have seen pink, peach, mm, and maybe purple. As well as these little picks here. These little, they look like uh, cuckleburrows. They came from Dollar Tree too, but I don't exactly know what those are called. And I only had two pieces left, but these are nice. I've used green with these two. So I'm just going to go down in those areas where the moss is and kind of nestle these in here because we would like to think that where the moss is growing, there's some soil. And if there's soil there, then plants can grow from it, right? Plants or spores or, you know, mushrooms would be really cute in a project like this too. And I want these to look like little, you know, baby trees growing. If you saw my tour, my video um, of my property, you could see that there are baby trees just growing in there all over the place this time of year. So this is our perfect little make-believe representation of spring and the life that comes from the old. Then this is a pretty little pick. It's like a fern pick. I don't have enough of this, so look what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this in the shape of a fern tip. Now it's going to look more like a regular fern. Not bad. I'm going to pull them apart. You can use ferns, definitely, that you can get from Dollar Tree. They have really pretty greenery, um, I noticed this year in their spring section. 
or their floral section. And I just don't want to just jab this in here. I want it to look like a live fern looks. So by doing that, or by saying that, I want to give it a little dimension where the bottom two pieces are laying more downward and where this top piece is standing up a little bit more. And you can use that moss to help you um, secure your pieces. When you put your glue down, you can put the moss in there too, and that's going to help hold it in place. Look how this moss will help lift that up. Now see the dimension that we get doing that? Very easy thing to do. I want to put one little piece over here. And then this, if you know what this is, you can tell me because I'm not entirely sure. But it came in some stuff that I got from the thrift store and I had two pieces of it and I use it often in like my display at the end of my videos, which by the way, you will see the final results of all these in the end of the video, like I always do. But I thought they were just so beautiful, the texture in them, and it just looks like a nice little log that would be on the ground and you can tuck moss down in the little, the holes in there. Nice little place for little creatures and little fairies and gnomes to hide, right? Gotta use your imagination. Let's add some bunnies in here. Let's start putting these down. This little bunny looks like he's coming out of a hole. So we secured him down in that moss, like maybe there's a hole underneath there. You can put a little glue on the back of the head. You can put them on their bottoms to make them stick to the pieces around them. And then I just decided, yeah, let's go ahead and put some moss in some of those holes. Why wouldn't it be growing there, right? Tiny mushrooms would have been adorable here too. So this is how it looks so far. But you know what? It needs to look a little bit more springy, right? Let's make it look a little more springy by adding a bit of color to it. So I've just got it propped up so you can see what I'm doing here, where it's not laying flat. And I'm just gonna pull the tops off of these. Now these also came from Dollar Tree. I only had one little piece of it left, uh, one stem. So using that hole is kind of overwhelming. It's kind of too big and not very realistic. So I am just going to tear the tops off or pull the tops off. You can layer them together like this if you would like, and then you can use them separately. Again, I'm tucking these around the little moss patches and in the little areas where there might would be some soil that's collected so that they could grow in it. A little more realistic that way, I think. And then I'm going to put my flowers down and then I'll glue it to my finger, just like that. Not important, you don't need to do that. <laughs> oh boy, protect your fingers, people. Please, please. I love you guys. I don't want anybody getting boo-boos because then you can't craft. You can't craft with sore fingers. Just be careful. You're just going to continue to add these here and there. And don't forget the back of your project, too. Put little sneaky hideaway things back there. So when somebody turns it around expecting not to see anything, there's maybe a bunny popping out the backside or a flower growing out the backside. Like it would if it was a little mountain, you know, or in a little hollow. You can use your tools to get the glue off. You know, a blow dryer or a heat tool. Here are the final results. Here's our little... Easter wreath up top if you don't want to do the typical pink and pastel colors. The orange is beautiful to me. The orange and green is a little more earthy. Bunny sign with the bouquet in it. And you can leave the bouquet off if you don't want to have it there. No problem. I would love it if you would subscribe. Now only do that if you really, really enjoy these types of videos where you can save money and make unique creations. I know that you can do it. I know you can do these. You most definitely can, but always make it your own. You don't have the same thing as me. Don't worry about it. You're going to do a good job and it's something that's going to bring you joy. I thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.